You're listening to Sports Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. Scumbags! Let's rage! Sports Rage with Gabe Marinci. Rage all you want. Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenzi. The Pips, the players, the hustlers, the people of Boston, but everybody else in between a Monday night meltdown. George Kurtz is going to hop up, and then Pete Annapolis will join us. You know what? Level three will uh, will it'll be NBA talk. All right, NBA hour, NBA hour. Um, fired up. It's kind of stuck up on us. Um, I knew like the the full slate of games were on Wednesday, but yeah, we got two games on Tuesday night actually tomorrow night. So man, man we got some NBA basketball to bet on, and that means. I'm kind of in a debate right now, and I'm frustrated because unlike football where I was prepared for this, where I loaded up my account because you need a lot of money for this stuff, NBA futures. But then we get into the debate of NBA futures. Listen, you bet on – I w- I've never been a big future guy, okay, just because I'm, I'm an impatient son of a bitch. That's why. So I'm not – never been, you know, I want instant gratification. If I'm betting now, now, now. I want the money now, right? But as you guys know, I've been playing a lot of futures, and – I don't mind college football futures because it's only three months, man. September, October, November, and then boom, the season's over in the first week of December. Right? So I don't I don't mind that. NFL football. Yeah, it's September too, but it goes by pretty fast and you know it's not you know baseball, I sort of waited till mid season, then I started jumping in on, on the futures and the division stuff. I don't want my money sitting around for that long. NBA futures, man, they're gonna have our money for a long time, huh? Like, when's the NBA regular season end? You know, like what? Like, you know, mid-April? You know, you know they're, they're going to have our money for a long time. That's, that's, that's what the part I don't like about the NBA futures. But, so, and like I said, I've got seven of them. i got seven, seven of them circled right now, except I'm starting to get cold feet about one of them. So it might just be a six-pack. And, you know, the team I'm getting cold feet about, actually, are the Chicago Bulls. All right, and I see a Buffalo our Buffalo Bill sign just uh, fell. It's destiny. It's destiny. <laughs> you can't make this up, huh? You can't make this up. Everything else is rock solid. The Bills, no. Even the Bill sign just fell. It's like everything's a sign in life. Like I said, like last Monday, I should have known, man. When I was on the way to Dodger Stadium and the wind was blowing and it was dark and it was all gray and everything, and the Uber driver said, you know what city this looks like right now, huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah, San Francisco. Now, what happened? San San Francisco ended up winning the game 1-0. All right, they they ended up uh, getting it done. Uh, But I was going to say the the Chicago Bulls. There's a lot of talk. You look at the Chicago Bulls roster and stuff, and they got a lot of star power now. There's a lot of firepower on the, on, on the roster. What they don't have is a lot of defense on that roster. Their games are going to go over the number, but they, they're, you know, they're going to be battling to win basketball games with that roster too. It's level two. This is Sports Rage. I am Marancy. We're kicking it. Sirius XM Channel 204 to my dear 1090. George Kurt, Sports Grid Radio Network is going to step up and in and join us. We're going to run the gauntlet with George. We'll get his thoughts on the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Red Sox uh, run uh, right now. As the Red Sox are just crushing the baseball. It's Grand Slam Central uh, for the Red Sox. And, of course, Kurtz is a Yankee fan. So, I don't know. It'd be like me talking about the San Francisco Giants right now. And I can't lie, if, if the Giants were playing in a series against the Atlanta Braves, I would boycott it. <laughs> I, I would just I would just boycott it. Uh, but the Boston Red Sox do it again, 12-3. 12-3. And we've talked about this a lot over the years. You'll hear athletes talk about it a lot. It doesn't matter what the score is, they'll say. They'll say, ah, it doesn't matter whether you lose 7 nothing or 7-1 or 17-1 or like, you know what I mean? The next game doesn't matter. But to me, it's starting to matter a little bit only because Boston are just killing these guys so much. And if you're Houston, you're going through a million pitchers. If you're a Houston Astro player, 
You've just spent the last two games just standing there watching balls get smoked over your head. And, you know, it's got to take an emotional toll eventually on a team that you're not just losing, but you're down 6 nothing. You're down 9 nothing all the time after the first and second innings. It's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, you can come back if you're down 2 nothing. You can come back if you're down 4 nothing. You, you know, you can't be spotting them nine runs and six runs. And Fenway has that magic. There's something special about Fenway, obviously. And I don't know, it's not just there's something special about Fenway. It's the fact is the Boston Red Sox bats are red hot right now. Red hot right now. And if you look at the Red Sox and you look at their hitting approach at the plate, they take what the pitchers give them, man. Base is loaded. Hey, I'm going to hit an opposite field for a single here. Right? Like you watch the Los Angeles Dodgers play, and even the San Francisco Giants, the New York Yankees, the Tampa Bay Rays, all these teams swing at the first pitch. Let's hit a home run, launch angle, analytics, launch angle, launch angle, launch angle. Boston, they don't seem to care about launch angles. Boston just wants to make contact, put bat on ball, and let's see what happens. Late night anger management class. This is Sports Rage. I am Marenzi. Vent your rage. Bring it. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Listening to Sports Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. Let me get this straight. You took all the money you made franchising your name and bid it against the Harlem Globetrotters? Oh, I thought the generals were due. He's spinning the ball on his finger. Just take it. Take the ball. That game was fixed. They were using a freaking ladder, for God's sakes. Late night anger management class. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morancy. The NBA regular season set to tip off in uh, less than 24 hours' time. The Milwaukee Bucks are minus one and a half uh, point home favorites. Uh, minus 120 on the money line. So if you laid them one and a half, you deserve to be punched in the face instead of uh, just taking the money line there. Total 236. Of course, Kyrie Irving is not playing because uh, he refused to be uh, vaccinated. He, he should just do what uh, Evander Kane did and get a fake uh, get a fake card, man. And uh, the Lakers lay three to the Golden State Warriors. We're going to spend uh, the third hour of the program, we promise. That we'll go like almost the whole hour on NBA basketball. Pete Annapolis joins us. We're going to bang off a bunch of teams. I'll share my thoughts. I'll share the, uh, the top six or seven win totals that I've got circled right now. It's time to start pulling the trigger on these things. We still got about 24 hours, and we got about 48 hours because there's only two games tomorrow. So for all the other team win totals, so if you got like the win total of Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Golden State, or the Lakers, it's time to get them in. And I do like the Laker total, and we'll get to that after. Let's bring in George Kurt, Sports Grid uh, Network, right now. Talk uh, baseball, hockey, NFL, football. Uh, George, always a pleasure. How you doing? Doing well. You mentioned it, right? We had all four, all three of my sports going tonight. It was an enjoyable night. Yeah, you know what? It wasn't so enjoyable for me as a Buffalo Bill fan. And it wasn't such an enjoyable weekend uh, for me as a Dodger fan, to be honest. But thanks for stepping up last week, uh, George. Chaotic night, uh, obviously, last week in Los Angeles with the windstorm and, and all of that. But I just brought this up earlier. So does it bother you at all? Like, or you just love baseball that much? Because I got to be honest, like, I'd have a problem watching the Giants and Braves and stuff. I'd be pulling for the Braves. So... Are you and the thing is, you can't as a Yankee fan naturally just say, you know what? I'm, like, let me put it this way, George: if it was the Seattle Mariners versus the Red Sox, you know what I mean? Or it's like the Indians versus the Red Sox, you could say, oh man, let's go Mariners, right? As a Yankee fan, I hope they beat them. It's the Astros. Yankee fans hate the Astros. You guys hate them. You hate everybody anyway. So, well, what's your feeling like? I'd have a hard time watching the Giants play now. It'd piss me off. Is it pissing you off watching the Red Sox kill it right now? 
No, because I'm making money off them, right? The Astros oh, have yeah, no yeah. pitching staff. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I generally care about once the Yankees are out. Yeah, and even when the Yankees are playing, by the way, I still want to win money. Steinberg is not sending me any checks. All right, so I still want to win cash. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I have thought about this a couple of times. I mean, I had no, no one to root for in the first round with the Red Sox either. They were playing the Rays. Hate them too. Right? Yankees and Rays always hate each other. Now it's Red Sox and Astros. There's just no one to root for here. So it's just money here. Or whatever, you know, DFS if I'm playing. Yeah, DFS yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever close season games I'm playing. I want to win cash. I really don't care who wins the games other than win me money. Uh, and it's hard. You know, I, I, always, I always feel bad for you with the Dodgers because they shouldn't have lost both games. All right? You can make an argument they should have won one, but they probably should have split. I mean, you can't tell me the Braves outplayed them. They really haven't. Dodgers haven't hit with people on base. So it's, it's funny. I do feel for my friends who are losing like this. You know, once my teams are out, I don't care anymore. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, because uh, I don't know how you feel. Two tough uh, losses there. That's they were the problem. Two tough I'd rather losses. get killed. I'd rather get killed. Lose 10 1, and I feel fine. But losing the way you lost, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd be able to sleep the last two nights. Let me ask you. Yeah, it was almost shocking, like the Bills lost tonight, where I can't lie, George, like when the, when the Dodgers took the 4-2 lead last night, I thought they had it. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, now nah, we're going to split here, and all right, the Dodgers are back, let's go. Go back to Chavez Ravine, tied up at one. I was just sort of shocked, but there's so much, there's been so much um, analysis uh, about Dave Roberts and what they did, and listen, I wouldn't have brought Urias in, man. You know what I mean? He's pitched too much. It's he's not a reliever like that. I, I I can live with the criticism there, but for me, that's lost in everything was the the weak ass throw from Souza, bro. Like it, he wasn't that deep. It was a close play at the plate. Like I saw, you know, I know I'm kind of being a jerk here. I'm criticizing. Like it was literally. You saw how close it was, right? Like, dude, Will Smith nearly got him, but. I was just thinking, I don't want to be that guy in my day, but, man, remember Dave Parker and Ellis Valentine, these guys. They didn't two-hop it to home plate, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the ball slows down in the grass and stuff. Like, we needed a crisper throw there, and that's not going to be brought up. That's not Dave Roberts' fault. and It's not Dave Roberts' fault they leave a million guys in scoring position all the time either. I never really bring the throw up unless it's, you know, bad. You know, it's over his head or it's an off. Hey, it was a it direct bad. throw, I know. 17. You know, they don't. And I'll tell you, when I saw it first, naked eye first to play, I thought he was out. I really did. We saw the replay. Oh, wow. He didn't get him till late. I thought he was out the first time I saw it. So, uh, (laughs) nice slide. It was a nice great, slide. Great yeah. slide. And we're, that's what we're seeing in base, since you can't block the plate anymore. All these guys slide hands first, right? Back in the day, he's out because he's not doing that, most likely. He's going to be afraid of, you know, breaking all his fingers there. And the what do you think of those mitts? There. What do you think of those oven mitts they're wearing? Because doesn't that give them an extra, You're cheating. Like, isn't that an extra you inch or two? Like, why don't I wear a bigger glove, George? You read my mind. Let's get a big, like, I wouldn't, I would start expanding it and just put a little bigger glove on out there. So like, would see I. what happens. Like, you know what I mean? Add an Did extra inch or two. They're not going to notice. Cheated? Didn't you have a cheated. cheated on their cheater where they put a little extra padding there, an extra inch on the uh, the glove there, maybe on the uh, waffle? It's well, the my team, here. our guys, well, listen, I was a goalie. I didn't cheat as far as pads are concerned, but uh, in our day, we had smaller pads, but everybody, dude, in our day, everyone used to take a hockey stick and put it over the stove to get a crazy curve. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, so, like, everyone had illegal curves and stuff like that. So, I, I, don't, I, don't, have a, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> I no, I don't like the the hockey mitt thing. I don't like it at all. I think that's ridiculous. If you're going to wear it, it should not be extend behind the fingers at all. Because once again, you aren't cheating. And like you said, I would definitely do that. By the way, it's already extended by an inch. I want to get the biggest one I can find. The well, one you see, find. it's such a game of inches, guys. Right? With these stolen bases and that that old that play don't play. Like I said, I'm not calling Suze out. It's just I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying a little bit sharper, like a little stronger throw. He would have been out. All right, hey, that's the that's the one thing. Like I don't I don't call the players out. Actually, I'm not one of those guys. I'm oh, I hate this guy and that guy. So, you know, we all know whatever people could be cashing in, doing this and doing that. I do believe George. And I don't know if you saw Max Scherzer said after said my arm was dead. He said I tried to suck it up and fight through it. I just you know I didn't fully have it. He, he didn't. He wasn't terrible. But if you look, George. What a week for the Dodgers, right? I mean, Tuesday elimination night, Thursday the dramatic game five, boom, into Atlanta over the weekend. They have not been home since last Tuesday. I think the day off, it's a time for them to exhale. 
Um, hopefully Justin Turner's fine. We saw he bat, right? I mean, you know, that didn't help. And, you know, they're losing Muncie. They lose Turner. It never F and ends, Kurtz. But I think the Dodgers are still fine. I'm not panicking. Who do you think wins that series now? Do you think they can come back or are you giving it to the Braves now? Oh, I think they can come back. Uh, I, listen, I'm not going to bet money. I'm going to bet on the Braves. It's hard to win four out of five here. I think the Dodgers are the better team. I think they've been unlucky. I said, you can make a very strong argument that it should be 2-0 Dodgers. Right? I mean, a very strong argument could be 2 0 Dodge. The Braves come up with some timely hitting when they needed it. Uh, I, I think the Dodgers will take two out of three at Chavez Ravine. I think it's going to go back to uh, Atlanta, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what's left. Yeah, we'll see what's left. But the Dodger pitching is lined up if they can take two out of three. Because, right, Bueller would go game six, normal rest, Scherzer plus one day's rest in game seven. So I still like the Dodgers here, but I am worried a little about tomorrow. Morton, generally been good. You know, Bueller's been up and down. He had what? He had, looks like a little food poisoning. What are you hearing now? Is he recovered from that? Can he go long? Okay, he's going to go four innings, five innings. So that's my biggest worry here. Can they get through tomorrow? George Kurtz uh, with us. I like Boston to win this series. I thought there was value tonight uh, coming in here. Um, I think Houston are in trouble right now. Kurtz, what about that series? Seems to be done. I mean, a 2-3-2 format. It was, I mean, it was over as soon as McCullers got hurt in the uh, last series of Division Game 4. It was over. They lost Garcia, too. That's all over the crime. So the Red Sox are going back to the World Series. <laughs> Yay. Well, they, appear to, they appear to be. Late night anger management class. Bring it. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. A little extra cash to bet on college football. Yeah, I'd like to bet 100 bucks. You want to pick a team? No, just take it. Oh God, I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like, like, smashing things. I am Gable Morency. It's just depressing, Kurtz. The Dodger talk actually depressed me. And the Bills game. I'm a Bills fan. Like, what the hell happened tonight with that, George? <laughs> like, like, there was never really ever a moment where I thought the Bills were not going to win the game, George. You know what I mean? Like, even to the end, like, when, when they took the, when I, when they took the lead late, I actually wasn't happy, but I actually said, good. I said, if we're so good, let's see you march down the field, Dylan. Let's go. Right? I was one of those, like, I was like, well, you know what? This is a good little test for us. And, dude, they, they, they returned the kickoff for a touchdown. That's overturned. Um, with a stupid penalty that didn't even affect the return. And, um, and then they marched down the field easily, Kurt. So I'm like, oh, they're going to score. I didn't like the, the, the sequence, man. Allen went up for the, 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 he got smoked in the air. He comes crashing down. I didn't like that they didn't review the spot. And then after the fourth down, I hated it, George. Like, he's in the shotgun at first. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. And then he runs up at the last second. It was just, it was very unnatural. Like, I could live with going for it. I would have lived with kicking the field goal as well. Because basically, if you kick the field goal, it's like, oh, my God, you got Josh Allen. How the hell do you not go for it? I totally get it. I just didn't like the play call, Kurtz, in the, in the end. That's the thing that got me. Well, you know, I had no problem with everything that happened there. Uh, all the numbers, by the way, the analytics will tell you they did the right thing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're going by that, I know that I don't think it's automatic you go by those things. But the analytics tell you they, uh, they did the right thing. Josh Allen, since 2018, has converted the most fourth and ones in the NFL. With uh, with 13 of them, so they tells you that by going for it, you had a 75 percent conversion probability, 63 percent win probability. So like I said, everything had uh, played into this, and also Tennessee had scored. Yeah, Tennessee had scored on the last six straight possessions. I think they played to it as well. So I think he did the right thing. It was unfortunate. It looked like he definitely slipped. I think it was because the center kicked him a little bit. Looked like get a little, hit that right fit a little bit, and I think that uh, that hit into it. I think it was just bad luck more than anything else. It was a perfect so, uh, sequence of events. You're right. He sort of stepped on. He the center hit him, and one of the dudes bit. on the Titans like pushed the lineman into him. Yeah. The guy in the Titans did a good job. He deserves credit for it. Like, it wasn't just Allen fell. It was everything at once. Because even, 
even Buddy pushing him, Allen's so big, he would have just fallen forward. You know what I mean? But I, like you said, like Allen rushed in, got it. You can see, like, you can sort of see as soon as he got the ball, he started to go down a bit, though, right, George? And then yeah. he just sort of hit the wall when the fat guy in the Titans, like, crashed into everything. He didn't get to use his 240 pounds. No, he's, no, there was no momentum. He didn't get to use any of it. No, right. no momentum. Toof, he fell like a drunk guy. <laughs> like, toom. Like, it was just, so I, I, I knew right away. Bad oh. luck than anything oh. else. Uh, it was just, just bad luck. Yeah, it was easy to see right away he didn't get it. You know, he was always like, well, <laughs> close. He might have lost yardage on that. <laughs> but uh, I think it was oh, like, I more bad luck than anything else. <sighs> Uh, you know, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is, it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. George Kurtz uh, kicking us. So, uh, well, how about, wait, listen, we can't be all be like you, uh, George, and the Dallas Cowboys. This is the luckiest the Cowboys have been in a long time, huh? 6 and 0 ATS. Like, God, that was a gift from Lord Gambler, what you got yesterday. I mean, they couldn't have played any worse yesterday. Really, they couldn't have played it. They were trying to give the game away all game long. Penalties up the wazoo. Whether they think they were legit or not, they took them up the wazoo. You turn the ball over twice in the red zone. You're letting Mac Jones go up and down the field on you. And Bill, uh, th- thank you, Bill Belichick, for every chance he had to punt, he punted. Thanks, Bill. How you punt that ball back to the Cowboys, what was it, fourth and three at about the 47 or so? How you punt that ball back is amazing to me. Was there any <laughs> doubt that Dak was going to come down there and end that game? I had no doubt. No doubt at all. It's like, thanks, Bill. And he did his all—that wasn't just the first time. It was about the third or fourth time, and that's not an exaggeration. You should go back and watch the game. It was the third or fourth time that he punted the ball on fourth and less than five for about his own 45 to, to Dallas territory. He's an old-school coach that way, and you just can't coach that in today's game. His defense was gassed. So I think Bill Belichick, and it's weird to say this, helped Dallas win that game. Uh, he really did. And, you know, there were just – there were – Terrible coaching decisions by both teams late in the football game. Healthy. Yeah, yeah. So they, they win despite him too. Yeah, and to me though, George, talk about unnatural sequences in which it's like, guys, don't you just see what's about to happen here? So you miss the field goal. It's twenty-one twenty. There's about two twenty or two forty. I think it's two forty left in the game. Two forty left in the game. Cowboys have two timeouts left. And remember, they're lining up on first down, and there's a delay of game. Somehow, so I don't know how the hell they got to delay a game, but they did. They got to delay a game, but they were about to throw the ball. They were about to throw the ball. And then on second down, they do throw the ball and it's intercepted. Like, how the hell are you throwing the ball if you're the New England Patriots there? And then that's what led to the pick six. And then conversely, the only thing that the Dallas Cowboys need to stop is don't get beat deep, and then they get beat deep on the first play, George. You can't make this crap up. And then the Cowboys somehow end up covering the three and a half, and they score a damn touchdown? Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, and it's funny. If you, if you watch a Dak play, and you may have seen it when it happened, because I saw it when I'm watching it, when uh, Dak on the final play, when he hits Lamb. The first thing you see, by the way, is uh, Schultz, the tight end, is wide open about five to seven yards down the field. Like, oh, hit him. The first thing I'll say, hit him. It's a 10-yard gain. You're well within field goal range. We'll end the game here. And then when Dakwood throws the ball up, you don't, they don't have the full screen. I'm like, there better be somebody wide open to pass that up. You know, because that was game over right there. And then you see that Lamb, yeah, nobody covered Lamb. He was wide open. So great play by Dak to have the patience to do that. Because if you see it, you see Dak sees Schultz. He sees Schultz and passes it up. So uh, I like that because I don't like playing for the field goal. I hate playing for the field goal. Go for the touchdown. Go for the win here. Uh, I said Dallas, things are coming up rosy right now. They truly are, especially if Dak, if this calf injury is not serious, which they're saying it's not. We'll see. Uh, because they're going to get healthier now. Right? Collins, the uh, right tackle, he comes back. Gallup, he should be back for next game. Lawrence, a couple of games after that. They're getting healthier now. We'll see if they can continue this. But uh, as I was saying before, they're winning despite McCarthy. His time management skills are... I thought Andy Reid was terrible back in the day. McCarthy's atrocious. Remember in the first... Uh, I think it was the first day for the end of the game. I forget which one it was. I was, I was, it was uh, when Lamb made the play at the make it fourth and one when Dallas kicked the game-tying field goal. He called timeout. And they decided to kick the field goal. What are you doing? Why are you calling a timeout that you let the clock run down to three seconds then? And then kick the field goal. You don't call a timeout and give New England, you know, the ball with 20 seconds left. Granted, there probably wasn't much they could do with it, but still, why give them 20 seconds? As soon as you call a timeout, that meant you were going for it. You were going for it on fourth and one trying to win the game right there, not tie it. But instead, he calls timeout, and he's done this before. If you remember the game against the Chargers, he almost forgot to call a timeout for the game-winning field goal. 
Someone had to tell him to call a timeout. <laughs> oh, don't forget. was going to run out. Don't forget about the time that he let like a minute and 40 seconds run off the clock and when he had yeah. two timeouts left instead of trying to score again because he had the lead. He goes, well, we have the lead. We're, we're good. <laughs> oh. I said, they're going to win. If they win anything, it'll be despite him. He's they, are six and oh. they are 6-0. They are 6-0 against. So, well, you know, you're luckier in the, the division, but it's a hell of a run. It's been a hell of a run. 6-0 and against the spread. 5-1. Five, 5-1. Five and one. Five and one. Uh, straight up, George Kurtz uh, kicking it. Uh, well, it's amazing, man, like how these, these games. It's been a wild year of football, hasn't it, George? Like, the, you know, the ends of these games, you, can't, you can never assume anything. You can never, like, you know what I mean? You can never assume one way or the other. Wild, wild stuff. Even the baseball has been pretty wild. Everything's been crazy. It's been fun. The NFL's been fantastic. I mean, how many games are we seeing going down to the wire? Tonight again. It seems like every prime time game goes down to the last minute. Every one of these damn games goes. I mean, it's been a fantastic season so far for the NFL. They have to be thrilled. The ratings are way up. We know that. Right? So I think, once again, it's been a very fun season so far. Of course, the fact that the Cowboys are winning certainly makes it more fun for me. Dallas Cowboys are off, right, until uh, Halloween. And uh, next week. Uh, ha- next Halloween. Week. Chargers are off. Bills are off. Uh, Dallas is off. Minnesota. Can you imagine the Bills Pittsburgh. have to stew for two weeks after this loss, too? That's why I didn't want Dallas to lose yesterday. Because it's also for the fans, it sucks, too. Right? Aren't you going to stew for two weeks, too? Because uh, I, I would have like Dallas think about it like <laughs> it's, it's hard of waiting a week. Waiting a week, that, that's what's always awful about the NFL when you lose. You have to wait six, seven days. Basically, nah, two weeks. the next day. Right? Hockey, maybe a day or two. You know, uh, basketball, same thing, a day or two. Football is at least a week. It's miserable. The Cowboys' uh, next game, so it's against the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday night football. It's going to be a big-time game. And I'll tell you what, the Vikings are playing pretty good football this year, George. They're not terrible. Right, they're they're obviously in a lot of dramatic games. They played a lot of close games this year, uh, but Kirk Cousins is playing very good football, and they're off as well. George, they're going to be coming off the bye. They're not playing this week either. It's going to be a truckload of points in that game. A truckload of points in that game. Everybody will be healthy. Dalvin Cook's been banged up, right? His ankle will be healthy by that game. Kirk Cousins is actually playing well. He's playing uh, pretty well. He's not getting any credit for it because Minnesota, been, they've been so-so. I think Mike Zimmer's hurt this team a bit as well. Once again, old-school coach doesn't uh, understand today's uh, the game's mechanics in today's game. But I think in that game, I'm not so sure that even defense is going to be able to stop the other. I think that's a game that's going to be on a fast track as well. I think you'll see a game like tonight, 60-plus points. The next so, next, so week seven coming up here, uh, you got Thursday night football. Uh, Cleveland Browns are minus three against the Denver Broncos. It's a pretty short price right now, isn't it? It was five and a half before. Who's, who's playing for them? It's the, well, the, well, that's what I'm saying. So Kareem hunts out for a couple of weeks now. All right? So now the Browns are getting bit by bad luck. It is what it is. So now Kareem hunts out. But from what I understand, Kurtz, Stefanski said that there's a chance that Nick Chubb plays. Like he's, It's not like out of the question that Nick Chubb plays. Baker Mayfield's yeah. playing, right? Like, So like, what am I missing here? Why did the number go from five and a half to three? Oh, he's probably lying about Chubb just to keep Denver guessing. Mayfield's got his shoulder popping out all the time. That hurts like hell. Oh, no, Beckham's banked up with a shoulder injury as well. This team's a mass unit. I'm more concerned about their offensive line. Odell never plays for them anyways. If he's not there, does it matter? People's Jones is actually killing it. I'm worried about their old line and Baker Mayfield's shoulder. Bring it. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. To Sports Rage Late Night with Gabe Marinci on Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 204. Oh, yeah, it's all set. They got the bug boy out. The bug boy? Yeah. The little fella's been riding his heart out. <laughs> They're going to break his maiden. <laughs> really? Yeah, but it's a little slow out there. It rained last night. Oh, this baby loves the slop. Loves it. Eats it up. Eats the slop. Born the slop. His father was a mutter. His father was a mutter. His mother was a mutter. His mother was a mutter. What did I just say? 
Late night anger man for Christ. This is Sports Rage. I am RNC. Kicking it with George Kurtz. Uh, Sports Grid's uh, George Kurtz joining us here. 6M Channel 204 Sports Grid Radio Network. The Mightier 1090 Sports Byline Sports Map. Armed Forces Radio Networks. Uh, George, I'm looking at Charlie Morton and his history against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And they, not many of them have really seen him too many times, actually. Mookie Betts has 24 at-bats, though, seven hits, hitting 292 against him with one home run. I've had a lot of success. I've been betting total bases. You know the total base prop. So total bases. So, you know, a single is one, a double is two. You don't get credit for the walk, though, George, which is frustrating. You're right. You don't get credit for the walk. Um, yeah, it's a little I've been, weird in that stat. What's that? He. That's always weird in that stat. He got on base. It is a base, but I think the definition is a by him. I know, right? I think there's, I thought the same. It's a, it's a base, right? He's like, on base. You know, in, He's uh, on base. In Babip, uh, you know Babip, right? B-A-B-I-P? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't get credit for a home run. Oh, because it's not at anybody? You didn't put, you didn't put the ball in play. That's Batting stupid. average on ball in play. You didn't put play, game. That's so stupid. <laughs> that so, one bothered me, too. So what what's BIP stand for? Because I know what it is. Yeah, it's so like the the average of hard Batting hit balls in red play. In play. Yeah, Batting average of balls yeah. in play. Yeah, that's a ball in play. how lucky you are or unlucky you are. Generally, is how it goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's funny though. It doesn't count a home run. That's stupid. <laughs> I always found that strange. <laughs> well, you and I felt the same way about Bumgarner and that seven inning no hitter stuff. So what you're telling me yeah. that if someone hits a grand slam, it counts for them, but if I throw a no hitter, it doesn't count for me. <laughs> like, how does that make sense? Like, it was a, so no, none of the stats make baseball. sense. None of the, yeah, exactly. It's a seven inning game. There was no hits. That's a no hitter. I, I that, that still bothers me to, the, to this day. I thought they were going to overrule it at some point, Gabe. I thought maybe they wanted to make sure there wasn't going to be a rash of these things. Yeah, there's going to be like 18, seven inning no hitters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. exactly. They, they will bastardize it. Right. I, I, I would be fine with that if it was a range-shortened game. Okay, then it wasn't the scheduled game. You know, it was supposed to go nine. It only went six. But this was a seven-inning scheduled game. He did nothing wrong. He gave up no hits. What do you want the guy to do? You know, and maybe he would have gotten if it were uh, two more innings, six more outs. We don't know. You know, so listen, it was your dumb rule, baseball. So he should have gotten a no-hitter. That, that still <coughs> blows me. If I was, if I was bump I'd be, I'm sure he doesn't care, but I'd be a little pissed. So, George... I got to think. So I was just talking about the total bases, exactly. So Mookie Betts, I think, is a good play here. He's hot right now. Back home, he steps up in big games. The Dodgers are six and zero in elimination games. This is not an elimination game, but it might as well be, um, right? It's a massive game for them. So I will be playing the Mookie Betts uh, total bases over. But with that being stated, this isn't the National League and the American League. You see the difference in styles of baseball. And I got to like the under in this game tomorrow night. What do you think of the total of uh, the Dodgers-Braves game? Oh, I definitely, I definitely like the under, right? Uh, Morton and Bueller, I think definitely it's going under here. Seven and uh, a half. I do uh, – I said length. Length is going to uh, – both bullpens have been used a lot. You know, they've been used an awful lot here. I think it's going to catch up to these teams as the series goes along here. Got to do what you got to do here. But I think they want Morton and Bueller. I think – They'd love for both to go six, right? At least six. So I, uh, I do think they'll push him a little bit. Maybe the Braves will push Morton a little bit more than the Dodgers. As you said, it is all but a must win for the Dodgers. Braves have some leeway. Not that they don't want to win. Of course they do. But maybe they could say, hey, you know what? we gotta get, we got to get Charlie to go six plus here so we can give our bullpen a break. Because I think that could be important later on here. But I like the under as well. And I generally know what you're betting because uh, you posted all. And I always check your bets against mine. I don't want to be going against you too many times. Well, we appreciate that. Although you'd be making money over the last three, four days. It's catching up to me. My luck has run out, Kurtz, but I'm ready to start over again. We appreciate that. I'm ready to start over again uh, tomorrow. So the Dodgers are minus 184. Minus one and a half is plus 110. I think the way to a you know, I like the Dodgers here. I do think they're going to win tomorrow. They're in tough. I mean, they, the Braves blew a, blew a 3-1 lead to them last year. But that's the thing, George, where I think it leads to a lot of confidence if you're the Dodgers in that you lost the three. You know, you came back from 3-1 on this team last year, and that was on a neutral field in Texas. Now you got three straight home games. The Braves are 1-10, George, their last games in this, the last 11 games at Dodger Stadium as well. They got swept, if you recall, in late August and early September. 
Well, I think that's it. If, if the Dodgers can win tomorrow, tomorrow's the tough game because Bueller versus uh, Morton. I mean, I would give the edge to Walker Bueller if I wasn't worried about the food poisoning. Now I think it's pretty much an even game here. Food I think the Dodgers have the it never ends, They man. were a little. They were. Where do you eat? Well, what, 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 what do you want? What are you? What are you getting food? What are you, I like to know the shoe. I like to know where he got the food poisoning from. Because I got to tell you, you know what I mean. I don't want to encourage. I'm not going to say I'm coming for you, but you definitely deserve to be ruined online on Yelp. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing, man? Like, who gave Walker Bueller food poisoning? Where is he eating? What happened? Where did he get this? I doubt they know. It's not. You don't get it right away from the one meal. I've had it a couple of times, but uh, that's, I think it's just bad luck. You know, I don't know whether he's puking or if he's, uh, you know, praying to the porcelain god all night or whatever he's doing. But that's an awful feeling and. Uh, so I said that worries me a little bit. But Game Four could be a complete crapshoot, right? Yeah, the Braves don't have any pitchers for Game Four. That's, That's right. why it's the advantage have, Dodgers. They, it's probably you know, all right? But even Roberts came out today and said, "Well, maybe it's not going to be Urias now." So that concerns me somewhat. This is why I would have never used him last game. I know. So what you're messing with the kid's confidence now and putting him in and out now. Right. Plus, it gave you a massive advantage in Game Four. I know. What about Urias first? You know what? You're, oh, I'll take. You know, it's Dodgers all day long. George, that was the whole effing point of starting the bullpen in Game One. Right. right. So it, that worries me somewhat. Worries me somewhat uh, that maybe Urias can't go now. Because, you know, if you can win tomorrow, it's 2 1. You would have had Urias. Now it's 2 2. Now that game's sort of a crapshoot, right? Whoever scores the most runs or whoever, whoever's bullpen doesn't fall apart. Yeah, you know what? Well, he was good in the beginning of the year until he broke his hand, right? The idiot broke his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He hasn't been the same. You notice he's got control problems now. Right. Of course, you know, you're not going to come back with a broken hand that quick, you moron. How about you use your non pitching hand? Come on. <laughs> he broke his hand, and that Devin Williams kid broke his hand, too, right? He's pitching. Right. Oh, he right doing? before the playoffs. <laughs> right? I mean, and then in a meaningless it's like game. Like a pitcher. It's like, I don't know exactly. Why don't you just, like, smash something where you won't break your hand and you throw it? You know what I mean, George? Like, I don't know. Like, if you're not angry about something, throw something. You know what I mean? Like, like honestly, like, if I'm Devin Bush, like, if you're, Devin Williams, if you're that mad, take a baseball bat to your locker. Like, what are you starting? What are you punching things for? You know what I mean, George? Or, like, throw, like throw, throw a baseball through the TV in the clubhouse or something. <laughs> like, do something like you don't have to physically injure yourself to, like, display rage. So, I, I you know, I got bad flashbacks about Morton. And, and he, George, he pitched for the Astros in the World Series, bro, in 2017 against the Dodgers. Yeah, he's so, looking a charm charmed life. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's brave. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. He knows where to go. Yeah, so yeah, I know. Hey, come to LA next year if you want, Charlie. So, um, Morton Morton finished Game Seven, limiting the Dodgers to one run over the last four innings uh, to give the uh, Houston Astros the title. He was on the freaking hill, but but he pitched last year in the playoffs uh, in the World Series against the Dodgers, and it was brought up, and the Dodgers got him for five runs and four and a third. I think that's more pertaining than what happened, right? So if you're the Dodger lineup, you know, there's a couple of guys at least have been around. Turner, Justin Turner's big too. Like, they need him. And now he gets a stinger, food poisoning. Max Muncy gets hurt on the last day of the, the, the year, George. Starting to wonder about, uh, you know, baseball gods don't want L.A. to win, bro. I think, I think the Dodgers win tomorrow. I do. I don't care really. Uh, I know I'm, I'm bringing up a lot of reasons they won't, but I can't see the Braves going up 3-0. I just can't. Like I said, they have not dominated the Dodgers whatsoever. I can't say it enough. You can make a strong argument. It should be 2-0 Dodgers. certainly should be at least 1-1. I can't see the Dodgers going down 3-0. I don't see it. I think they'll win tomorrow. And like I said, I, I, I'm, game four is now what, what I'm more curious about. Who's pitching for both sides? What are the Dodgers going to do? I think Urias almost has to start. You don't really have a choice here. You know, what are you going to go with another bullpen game and hope? You're going to throw Gonsolin out nah, there? No, no, stop screwing around with the bullpen games. They push their luck. That's the thing. It's like robbing a bank, man. Like, you can't rob the same bank twice in the same week. Like, you know what I mean? You got to move on. You can't, like, go back to the scene of the crime. And that's what these managers do. Or oh, work last time. And, like, it's like, guys, like, George Kurtz uh, with us. I am Gabriel Murray. Um So, George, uh, we're not. So, what we're. we're we're not even a week into the NHL yet, right? Well, we're five days in, so we haven't had a full week of uh, action yet. They started on Wednesday, but what do you what what, do you, what are your takeaways? What what, what are your takeaways uh, so far, George, uh, of the NHL season? Any Is trends, any, teams? Like what what what, what do, what's your takeaway? Are we seeing a lot of goals? I mean, every night. It seems like we're getting at least one game with well, uh, you know double digit goals being scored. Eleven tonight, it, yeah. St. Louis game. It seems, George, to me, that it's split. There's either no goals or a ton of goals. Like, you know what I mean? 
Because I'm looking here. Looking at the, uh, I may be looking at the, uh, the uh, I guess, the positive of all the gold pucks going in. The yeah. It's just okay, but nice look. I'm looking right now. The Toronto Maple Leafs, guys, 4-0 to the under on the season. What's money on that game? 4-0. Thanks, Toronto. Ottawa Senators, 3-0 to the under on the season. Montreal Canadiens uh, played to the under on the season. Pittsburgh, uh, now the Rangers, 3-0 to the under. Pittsburgh, 3-0 to the over. So, you know what, George? Yeah, there's been a few games with higher scoring, but I'm just looking at the teams and, and, and the marker here. Here are the Ducks, 3-0 and to the under. That's a good under team, George, the Ducks. Yeah. They it, they, I mean, Gibson, they don't have goal scorers. Gibson's a great goalie. How about the Kraken, 3-1 and to the over? Everyone said, oh, Kraken under. 3-1 and to the over for the Kraken. The Kraken. Uh, the Islanders, they're playing the overs every night because they, their defense is not showing up. And Sorokin hasn't played all that well. So, uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's been a weird start to the season. I thought the overs also might come in because, remember, Gabe, they said they were going to crack down on the cross-checking, which I really haven't seen, by the way. Uh, maybe an extra cross-check penalty a game, but nothing drastic here for all the cross-checks we do see. So, I thought there'd be more power plays. Really haven't seen that yet. Uh, You're right. The NHL, it's as ornery as ever. Right, seeing guys take I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get suspended <laughs> one game in, one game in. Let's board somebody. I mean, geez, hey. come on. Uh, I know you're right. Game. You're right. They're, uh, they're, they were fighting in the preseason. I don't know. They're just angry. Oh, they always guys. <laughs> right. That, but uh, you see, you saw what Larkin did. Right. He got he got quasi boarded too. I didn't blame him for going back and slugging the guy. I really didn't. He was angry when he got a game for it. So that's one thing about the NHL, man. You got a lot of angry people out there. I saw Kevin Biaxa on TV, and he does a great job. Um, you know, a former longtime defenseman. And he was a pretty dirty player, and he cross checked a lot. And even he said, he was talking about that, George, what you said. He goes, you know, I'm watching these games because they asked him the same thing. You know, what's your takeaway, Kevin, after the first, you know, three three games or whatever on Saturday night they asked him. He goes, well, I was under the impression you weren't going to be allowed to cross check anymore. He goes, looks like it's business as usual out there. <laughs> He had a bunch of examples about, and he even goes, listen, I, you know, people know how I played. He goes, even I think this is a penalty, he was saying. like, He goes, even I think this is bad. <laughs> like like you said, George, it's like the first week of the season, and guys are like just killing each other with the stick. I love it. Um, they're just killing. But you know, what's up with the crack? I know George said they lose tonight. The New Jersey Devils have only played once. I don't know what's up with that scheduling quirk, huh? The Devils only played once, but I don't think the Devils are as bad as people think. They're minus 134 against the Kraken. What do you think of the overnight hockey lines right now? Yeah, uh, Blackwood's not playing tomorrow. He still hasn't recovered from the heel. I don't, uh, generally, uh, Gabe, I pick on teams that are playing back-to-back nights. So uh, I'll take the Devils tomorrow. Yeah, because, and, uh, dude, the Kraken have been on the road all week. Oh, Wednesday, yeah, they, they Vegas. Not ready either, right? Vegas, Columbus. Uh, who else did they play? Vegas, Columbus. Uh, there was someone else mixed in there. The 4-3 game, whatever. More with Kurtz on the other side. Philadelphia, late night anger man for crap. SportsGrid.com. Betting insights and entertainment at your fingertips 24-7 as our team covers the most important topics in sports wagering. Real-time odds, predictive betting models, expert picks, and more. Want the edge? Then get on the grid. SportsGrid.com. Late Night Anger Management class. This is Sports Rage. Got George Kurtz for a couple more moments here. George, uh, pretty crazy, isn't it? You figured that it put the West Coast game, huh? Dodgers' first game back home, that they put the West Coast game at nighttime as opposed to making the Dodgers play. So it's throwing me off here. I knew, I was aware, but it just sort of kicked in, George, the nerves as a fan. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just sort of like... I was like, you know what? This game's actually not like a long ways away, George. This game's like what? This game's in like, yeah, like this game's coming up. And I swear, George, I had a TV on in front of me, and I just showed highlights of the Braves in the postseason being safe at the plate, and they were showing Sid Bream and the Pittsburgh and all that stuff. These guys have had a lot of good luck at the plate. These guys, I tell you, over the years. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good thing you said that, by the way. I, I knew there was a game tomorrow afternoon. I would have thought it was the American League game as well. I think the reason they're doing it is because on Saturday it was the reverse. The Dodgers got the night game. I guess, once again, you know the network wants the night game. So I guess they once again, TBS gets it one day and FS1 gets it the next. That'd be yeah, right. yeah, you're I, right. The only reason I can think it was other than that, you're absolutely right. I mean, the Dodgers should have the night game to the West Coast team. 
So it's uh, two two o'clock local, two o eight local time. First pitch for the Dodgers. It's early, man. Changes a little bit of a dynamic. It's good and bad. I don't know. The stadium will be a little less raucous, I think, uh, early early. So in other words, anyone knows in L.A. So yeah, George. Last weekend when I went to Game Three, it took me. I left what should be like a sixteen to eighteen minute drive took uh, an hour and 50 minutes for me. Yeah. Like it was two hours. It's sort of like getting to Giant Stadium. You know what I mean? Like the same thing. Like you're just screwed. Like you're, what are you going to do, bro? There's only a couple of roads in and there's thousands, tens of thousands of people, bro. There's just, there's, there's no escaping it. It also it means, was, by the way, shadows will play a part tomorrow. Yes, yes. I want, that's what I was going to bring up. Yes, yes. Another good thing for the under, huh? I like it. I'm going to go heavier on the under. Now. Early like under. What about the first five under, too, huh? The sun oh, coming like in, shadows and dark in the back and all that, whatever, you know? Plus, they're fresh. They're still throwing hard. All right, hang in here, Kurtz. We'll get you out in a couple minutes. I just want to get a couple more hockey picks. So, yeah, guys, afternoon baseball. Oh, boy. Whoa, Nelly. Happy birthday, Keith Jackson, 93rd birthday.